We are here at the 2021 International Workboat Show, and I'm with Liz Burdock, who's the president and CEO of the Business Network for Offshore Wind. Liz, how are you this morning? I'm great, thanks. Excellent. So you're here kind of showcasing the network's message for the entire maritime sector. Can you talk a little bit about the conversations you're having at the event this year? Sure. We've got a lot of interest in offshore wind now. And the conversations that we're having is essentially how many vessels are going to be needed for the offshore wind market as it develops along the East Coast and then um, moves further out on the West Coast and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. And as that, I mean, that that speaks to how things have changed with offshore wind because that, that West Coast, I know that it's, it's floating offshore wind as opposed to the, the stationary setup that had been traditionally all offshore wind was. So, you know, that really speaks to how this topic has changed and developed in just a sh few short years, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. So glo globally, uh, we're moving from fixed bottom foundations to floaters because we're going into deeper waters. So what is happening on a worldwide scale is now happening in the U.S. So when, what we're going to see, obviously, on the West Coast is floating offshore wind because of the deep waters. But we're also going to see it off of Maine as well. And then this, what I term the second wind energy areas that the Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management will be leasing between 2021 and 2025 will be in deeper water. So we'll also see floaters on the East Coast as well. Yep. And you know, those, those developments between 2021 and 2025, that speaks to what's really a path forward for offshore wind that probably wasn't there even a few years ago. Can you talk a little bit about that path forward? Yeah, absolutely. Well, not even a few years ago. It wasn't even there two months ago. So this is brand new. The Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management has come out and said that they will be leasing uh, sites in New York, North Carolina, West Coast, and then the Gulf of Mexico uh, between 2021 and 2025. And what's significant about that is that they've actually put, they've actually said the sites, they've said the timeline that they're going to work to achieve the permitting process, and we never had that transparent or clarity before in the offshore wind market, which should help uh, those looking to get into the market, give them some more confidence about how this market will develop and, and help de-risk it for them. And you shared some of the, the information that you make available to your, to your members this morning, and it's some, some pretty incredible detail. Can you talk a little bit about the kind of resources that you make available to your members because of your singular focus on, on the sector? Absolutely. So I like to say that we track the market 24-7, 365. And, and because the market has exploded really since 2016, um, it's, it's been a lot of data to track. And, and people have been tracking it on Excel sheets and trying to keep up with all the state commitments that have come out and then all the, the Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management activity that's occurred, as well as the private sector activity that's occurred. So we have aggregated it all together in this one singular tool called the Offshore Wind Market Dashboard that you can go to any time and you can see exactly where the 17 projects are that are under construction. You can see what the state commitments are, what the federal commitments are, how much uh, in investment has been made in the in the U.S. market as well. We capture all of that. But what is really significant, and I, I didn't mention this this morning, under each one of those 17 projects, we actually have the supplier contracts that have been let. So you can see who has gotten a contract, so who you might want to partner with or might might be your client specifically, or if there's still an opportunity for your product or service in that project. I mean, and that information literally isn't available anywhere else, is it? No, it's not. So, I mean, because that's what we do. We, we track the market and we work with our uh, over 400 members and who are developers, the suppliers, the tier one suppliers, and they give us the information about where each one of their project is, or is in the process. So we're able to capture all that and provide it out to the to the to our members so that we can build the supply chain and make it more transparent and easier for them. Beautiful. So what's the best way to kind of continue this this conversation or to, to anybody who's curious about learning more or becoming one of your members? So, well, one is to be here at the Workboat Show and visit us at our booth and talk to us. Um, we have all of our staff here that is really knowledgeable and can help help navigate uh, a company that wants to enter into the offshore wind supply chain. So the first step is get here, visit our booth, talk to us. If you happen to miss the show, make sure you come next year because we will be here. Um, and then visit us on our website as well and reach out to us.